This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. All of our podcasts are available from our website, www.sas.ac.uk. Well, thank you very much for the invitation to, uh, to join you here at this wonderful conference, and uh, thank you for your uh, introducing words. I mean, I'm very uh, also to be here, but uh, I'm also a bit embarrassed because I will not give a distinguished lecture. It's rather having seen all these scrabbled notes of what were many in the last days. I I was doing it something like myself, and I've not this wonderfully constructed paper uh, you have until now presented. If you speak about uh, huge spaces, I would touch. I must say it's a very small space in comparison to what we have heard now, because we a little bit descend from heaven, even if we turn to heaven uh, very soon, uh, having done interplanetary uh, uh, research until now, the last uh, uh, lectures. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, you could have add, uh, to say one word, because my lecture is short, so I can allow me this remark uh, on that is uh, what the what what mass is for Kepler, Mercury is for Einstein, not because his uh, relativity, relativity theory was proved by uh, the spatial uh, structure changing by means of the uh, proximity of Mercury and the Sun. And uh, this brings me to say that uh, what I'm trying to do today is a little bit, um, let's say, to work with some of these notions we have, uh, we have spoken about, that means space, body, uh, and uh, most of representation. I mean, on that level, uh, I'm precisely what has been uh, done before, I suppose I have to do that like 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 that. At first glance, uh, Benjamin's and Warburg's Mediterranean um, does not seem to be a particularly spe a particularly spectacular argument. Uh, if we count the rather circumscribed number of times the word is mentioned in the work, I'm much more looking at words than on images uh, today. Or if you compare it to the activities of Paul Valéry, about whom uh, Benjamin has written in extenso, or projects like Hamel Zeugel's Alantropa, which the architect promoted uh, from the year 1928, it's some crucial year in our uh, discussion, 28-29 uh, today, until his death uh, in 52. Uh, he fought over his lifetime to build, and this is not one of these Warburg drawings with, uh, with the diagrams and cultural historical lines, but it's a uh, project of a real change of uh, the physical geographical space. Um, in fact, he proposed to build a dam from Gibraltar, close to Gibraltar, uh, and uh, build a connection between Sicily and Tunisia. Uh, and uh, from that, a railway could be run from Berlin to Kapstadt. Um, a kind of <laughs> kind of post-Napoleon model uh, of colonization of Africa, but also a negation, if not destruction, of the Mediterranean, of Benjamin, Warburg, and the whole generation of artists and writers, if not a rising number of tourists, uh, who sojourned in Liguria, Capri, the Provence, between, say, the first decades of the 20th century, uh, after all, between the First World War and the uh, Spanish uh, Civil War. I did not add to the list of places I mentioned the Levant coast, it means it is uh, Anatolia, uh, because with the contract of Locarno in 1923, uh, one of the greatest politically forced migrations of the 20th century uh, started and took place. It means the Turkish and Greek purification. Uh, this only a few years after the Armenian genocide uh, and the end of the Ottoman Empire. So, if you speak about Mediterranean in the 20s, we should be aware of uh, that that's, it's not only Capri, uh, but it's also uh, Thessaloniki and what happens uh, between Greece and Turkey. Untouched from these events, Walter Benjamin from 1924 uh, started to spend long months in Italy, Ibiza and southern France. But in fact, the word Mediterranean in his writing hardly appears. While staying on Capri, his major project was to write the Ursprung des Deutschen Trauerspiels, 
That's not quite a good place to do so, whereas Warburg uh, is strongly relying on the notion of Mediterranean cultural spaces without working the concept of the Mediterranean theoretically out, however. None of the two German Jewish authors has ever traveled to the southern or eastern coast of the Mediterranean, to Morocco, Egypt or Palestine. Even if Benjamin uh, for years was evaluating the invitations to settle in Palestine, to come to the Hebrew University uh, in Warburg, uh, Einstein was offered to become a president of Israel later, as you know, in Warburg draw a map where his personal history is inserted in that of the great cultural migrations from antiquity uh, to early modern times. The origin point uh, of his world uh, in this sense is this one, no? um, of his world in this sense uh, is Jerusalem but the rest of the southern coast of the Mediterranean uh, would remain empty. No trace of Algier uh, where the young Fernand Podel was active as a teacher between 1924 and 1932. The only quoted city uh, in Warburg uh, is Alexandria, uh, to which uh, we will return. Warburg had spent long years in Italy, after all in Florence, but in 1904 he had decided that his role is to become, as you know, that of the lighthouse guardian uh, in Hamburg, and to build a laboratory of books and black and white photographs of works of art and images of all kinds rather than being confronted uh, with the Florentine wall paintings and archival records. So sometimes I ask myself how can we uh, stay there. <laughs> okay. um, it is in his late travel to Italy where he was working on the introduction and formulation of the Nibbles Uni Atlas. One of the versions is written in Naples in the early summer of 1929. Um, and his uh, diary uh, is full of aphoristic uh, remarks, uh, a literary form also favored by Benjamin, where we find this kind of uh, uh, notions uh, of Mediterranean, uh, let's say, interactions starting in the 1910s, to which I will uh, shortly uh, speak about. Now, in Warburg, uh, the Mediterranean is an intermediary space between Orient, the Orient and the North. What I'm doing, I find very difficult, difficult to uh, to work out uh, a, a lecture in with two of the most complex uh, German writing uh, authors of the 20th century uh, in English translation. So what I do, I give you uh, the German uh, wording uh, here and uh, and go through a series of uh, quotations which I give always in German and in. Uh, and in uh, English. But let's start just for a moment uh, with the German one and I shift into English again. Wodurch wir, uh, das heißt for 1927, just to, to get into that point of the Mediterranean essence space between the Orient and the North. Wodurch wir, mein getreuer Freund Helfer Dr. Sachs und ich, eine Wissenschaft der bildlichen Orientierung schaffen konnten, die uns berechtigte, von einer neuen kulturwissenschaftlichen Kunstgeschichte zu sprechen, die weder zeitliche noch räumliche Grenzen kennen darf. Which may not have any spatial or temporal uh, limits or uh, borders, uh, wenn wir auch nur zeitlich von etwa 2000 vor Christus bis 1650 nach Christus gehen, if we only go from 2000 before Christ uh, until the year 1650, Uh, und räumlich geografisch betrachtet uns auf die Ausstrahlung uh, des Mittelmeers beschränken, weil wir freilich von Khorasan, also in the Afghan border in, uh, today, um, uh, to England and from Egypt to Norway um, have to um, investigate the territories, the terror. Even if Warburg is not concerned uh, with the contemporary migrations, I spoke about that before, which constructed a borderline between the Islamic even if westernized um, Asia Minor and the Greek Orthodox Greece, like Orthodox Greece relying on a classical and Byzantine tradition, self-inventing this nation, uh, in that time uh, this region plays a crucial role as a critical, as a critical zone where the great historical transmissions um, that took place in Warburg's eyes and not only his. In Warburg East-West uh, movement is complementary 
uh, to uh, South North and understood uh, the as conceptual uh, notions in the dialectics of magic versus uh, reason. Both can be thought as uh, back and forth pendulum, all these are very known uh, points. I just want to geographize them, show the spaces uh, which are uh, implied in the thinking of Warburg. Um, I don't need to work this out in detail here, obviously. Uh, we could follow it all the way long, not uh, walking on the earth, uh, but may, uh, turning uh, again, looking at the sky, the fixed stars uh, in this case, and the planets uh, obviously too. Uh, in a long series of quotations along uh, a reading uh, of, of along Warburg's reading uh, of Boll uh, and his interpretation of the astronomical or astrological cycle uh, of the Palazzo Schifanoia. Um, I will go through uh, a short, quickly uh, go through a number of quotations starting from 1902, um, then 1912 13, the Schifanoia moment, so to speak, and what comes then on uh, in the uh, 1920s. I don't want to read that all, but just quickly look. Uh, here in this quotation, a uh, very famous quotation from the Bild ist Kunst in Florentina Bürgertum. Uh, you have not a concept of a Mediterranean, but you have a concept of the Tuscans. That means of an um, uh, archaic, uh, local, uh, um, ethnic and cultural uh, community uh, to which uh, the actual Florentines uh, would uh, refer or be, uh, how to say, in a long durée, uh, still bound uh, in a certain way, negotiating, uh, let's say, magic and uh, an energetic power of images, uh, in Licht, uh, so to speak. Um, but from there I come to the uh, 1912 and 13 models, uh, which are, I skip this, which come uh, into this uh, model of the uh, Wanderung, uh, not only Bildwanderung, but uh, also uh, recreations uh, of ideas. Uh, for example, the complicated and fantastic symbolism of these figures, speaking of Schifanoia, has heiser to resist all attempts to, of interpretation. By extending the purview of the investigation to the East, I shall now I shall show them to be survivals of astral images of the Greek pantheon. They are, in fact, symbols of the fixed stars also over the centuries. In their wanderings through Asia Minor, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Arabia, uh, and Spain, they have lost uh, their Grecian uh, clarity of outline. I'm very interested in this. What is how Warburg considers the in between space and time, between let's say um, Athens uh, and uh, Florence or Ferrara uh, in, this, uh, in this case. This is one of the classical quotes on, the, uh, on, on this in between, how uh, the genius of Italy and the genius of Western Italy is also aware of, had its roots in a shared determination to strip the humanistic heritage uh, of Greece of all its accretions of traditional practice. Uh, whether medieval, oriental, or Latin. It was by that desire to restore the ancient world. Uh, that's a good European, obviously it's good European, it's Nietzsche, no? Uh, the good Europea uh, began his battle for enlightenment in that age of internationally migrating images that we a shade too mystically call the age of Renaissance. Um, I don't want to read that all, but uh, you have here again this um, concept of losing, losing uh, over the centuries by wandering through Asia Minor, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Arabia and Spain uh, and uh, I have already shown uh, this uh, uh, before. Um, or referring also to India, uh, so only the last phrase of this quotation. Um, you can read the, uh, the English, I read for once the German one. There gibt eine Nachprüfung der indischen Dekade, das nicht mehr überraschende Resultat, das wirklich, wirklich indisches Beiwerk ursprünglich echt griechisches Gestirnsymbole uh, überwuchert hat. And to what extent can the stylistic shift uh, in the representations of human beings in Italian art be regarded as part of an international process of dialectical engagement with the surviving imagery of Eastern Mediterranean pagan uh, culture? The problems will be taken out after my uh, running through uh, this. This is a, uh, then the concept, obviously, of a a antique prophecy 
inverse images in the age of Luther, how then the east to west uh, migration is complemented by uh, south to north uh, migration uh, in the next, uh, next moment. And within that, uh, there is always the complicated issue of Alexandria. What is Alexandria in, uh, in Warburg? Is it a Hellenistic place or is it an Islamic place? And it's one for a time this, one for a time the other. This is not completely clear. Um, this was the age of Faust in which the modern scientist caught between magic practice uh, and cosmic mathematics was trying to insert the conceptual space of rationality between himself and the object. Interesting that the word um, object uh, uh, appears. I will speak about the absence of the notion of object uh, in Warburg at the end uh, of my lecture and say that in Benjamin this is a, one of the basic notions is das Ding. Um, well, Athens has constantly to be won back again from Alexandria. And then from this, the, let's say, ethical uh, and formative function uh, of the uh, KBW, uh, exactly uh, that many further milestones are still incompletely defined migration route. Zykitsus, uh, Alexandria, Oxene, Magda, Toledo, Rome, Ferrara, Padua, Augsburg, Erfurt, Wittenberg, Goslar, Lüneburg, Hamburg. Uh, may yet be uh, unearthed so that European civilization will emerge uh, with ever growing clarity as a product of a dialectic, etc. You have all, you are fully aware of this step from the cultic practice with mathematical uh, contemplation and, as he says, uh, back, uh, back again. Um, I will uh, finish my uh, reading through some of the. Uh, passages of Warburg with an uh, untranslated uh, text, uh, which I will uh, only shortly, uh, shortly read, um, where you have this concept now not of the uh, clarity of Athens, but of an earlier stage, uh, which is the Tiasos, the Dionysic uh, Orient, which is not the unclarification of the Greek clarity in a post-classical time, but a pre-classical uh, oriental moment, uh, which is, um, um, naja, mörderischer Taumel uh, und alle mimischen Aktionen, wie sie im diasosischen Kult gehen, laufen, tanzen, greifen, bringen, tragen lassen, uh, etc., uh, etc. So, I have gone uh, back. Okay, you see in this quotation, uh, which is for the last I have now, is that you have again the, the losing of the organic uh, Unitarian outline. Uh, uh, whereas Alexandria would use uh, this tradition uh, for the production of um, uh, artistically uh, unsubstantial uh, geroglyphs of future. It's a very strange, uh, very strange uh, notion. Uh, and finally, um, uh, one of the um, um, quotations from the Memosine records. The Memosine has to provide a more, much clearer introduction to this issue. The Mediterranean basin is the arena uh, and the span of a wing beat seen from a bird's eye perspective. Rome, which is the barbarisms uh, of, Hellen of Hellenistic practical magic, it is Alexandria, and the barbarisms of daring tales of chivalry, uh, Paris, uh, Bruges. Question, will lost Athens, the primordial mother of harmonical cosmology, reform this decephalous beast in order to restitute the denkraum, the thought space? Uh, the statics of the ego feeling depend from the migration period of pre-coined <coughs> dynamograms. Self-translation. Well, so far, uh, looking through, uh, um, Warburg's um, mentioning of the Mediterranean. It is clear that looking in an undialectical way, Warburg is not a Mediterraneanist, but a Europe, Europe, Europeanist. Um, the Mediterranean is a historic laboratory, uh, laboratory for the formation of Europe uh, with the poles of Athens uh, and Alexandria and finally Florence. But what Alexandria is remains unclear. A Hellenistic, I anticipated that already, a Hellenistic fallback in magical thinking and clarifying uh, the Athenian Perseus or an Oriental um, Arab magic. The migrations 
uh, to which Warburg is referring uh, in his work on the astrological tradition are not pre-classical but post-classical, uh, involving Alexandria, Baghdad, India, Spain, and then Padua and Italy with a necessary dose of magic, but also shelling, the, re the stripping out of uh, the original Greek purity. But this is only half part of the story, for there is another model of origin, which is again oriental. The primordial Dionysian world of phobic dem 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 demonic powers as the Tiazos and the Menads. How Athens is born out of this and how Alexandria relates to it uh, afterwards uh, remains unclear. If not by a metamorphosis of this model into a transhistorical or even ahistorical and ever present dynamics or tension within Barbaric psychological drama of image and memory collective as well as individual. To cut a long story short, I want to restate. Europe is born, in Barbaric's eyes, Europe is born from the Mediterranean. Um, or the Mediterranean is the intermediary space between the Orient uh, and Europe, participating in both. Uh, and thus, it becomes a metaphorical space, uh, if you want, uh, for the permanent struggle uh, struggle uh, Warburg so often uh, refers to. In a certain way, uh, his rhetoric is sometimes a little bit Pyrenean, so very negative on the, uh, on the um, let's say, on the Oriental side. But on the other hand, by bringing that in, uh, he uh, is open to the um, historical, no, that's not the right thing now, to the historical uh, dialectics and dynamics and, um, and suggests and, and promotes research uh, on in Oriental studies and uh, in Islamic studies, uh, even if sometimes really um, speaking very negatively about, uh, let's say, what he uh, reassumes uh, metonymically uh, in the city name um, Alexandria. Italy is obviously crucial um, in his participation in the Mediterranean tradition. On the one hand, uh, and as, allow me, the Schauplatz the stage uh, of the rise um, of humanism uh, in the shelling of antiquity. To understand um, the intertwining um, of his notes in the 28-29 travel to Italy, nine months with uh, Gertrude Bing, as you know, uh, we would have to analyze the really crucial moment uh, of, the, of his participation uh, in the uh, Lateran, Lateran contract. Um, we have, this is coming one of the most famous and often shown and discussed, uh, let's say, um, um, sheets um, um, of the Memo Sune, um, canvases of the Meta um, Atlas, because it is a double uh, arrangement, as uh, Michael Diaz has shown. No? Uh, it's a double composition of images. It uh, critically inserts uh, an already composed structure of images, and it does itself uh, as a kind of uh, compositional structure uh, in combining a variety of, um, of, um, of pictures, if you uh, allow me the word picture, uh, in this case. And, uh, but what happens, I, I would have done another lecture on that point. Just give me only a minute to, to say that. Uh, what, what is the point? How he reads his, uh, from Karin Michel's uh, published uh, diary of their travel, how he uh, escaped the hotel, he went there even if Ping was against, and then he, uh, then he sees something, but he sees not much, even if he has a um, an, an, an binocular. But then he went to the cinema. Uh, and, the, and he says that the next day he sees a documentary film, the day after the Lateran contract, uh, one of the few times cinema appears no, uh, in Warburg's writing, uh, where he then describes the uh, uh, Caesarian, beautiful, uh, cruel uh, ellipse of Mussolini uh, and other, uh, other ways he, in a certain way, he's fascinated by and, um, and, and he struggles with his uh, his concept of revival of antiquity on the one hand uh, and uh, what uh, uh, Mussolini politically is about, uh, what he's well, well aware of, so how he, how he the aesthetical dimension of the working out of, the, of, the, of this empire and church, um, let's say, contract, uh, which attracts him. Uh, on the other, other hand, he has to refuse uh, and the, the swimmer here in this picture in a certain way is the index figure of this kind of fascist body culture. Uh, anyway. So, hoc est corpus. Uh, we have spoken uh, about that uh, already. I come to an end of my uh, short, um, let's say, observations uh, into the work um, of uh, Warburg. Uh, there is a, 
Well, look, I mean, this is a, a quotation from the Dr. Feier, no? Let me be clear, while I was in Italy, my dear wife received a letter in which my conversion to Catholicism was much appreciated uh, or welcomed as a lack of, of character. In my view, it is not enough to smile at such meaningless nonsense, since it shows the difficulties in demanding an awareness and knowledge regarding the culture of the Mediterranean Basin, as if this would be Catholicism, uh, as an act of self-education uh, of northern people. Perhaps you just read this and I don't go into that, but to under well, it's important. Um, when I was in Rome, people asked me why I was studying the Nachleben of Antiquity precisely at the Northern Sea, although it is mainly a matter related to the Mediterranean. This I doubted. The spiritual heritage of the Mediterranean Basin is not only a European, but a U Eurasian issue. It is a crucial shift, it's a crucial to shift our focus on the Middle East in order to achieve a thorough cultural analysis concerning the mentality of the modern Western people. I mean, that's uh, the theory of the modern Western people uh, is one of the points uh, he is, uh, he is uh, coming to. Uh, well, I have here now something like uh, a passage uh, of uh, quotations and I should not uh, continue that. Um, well, I mean, there's the dialectics of a survival of antiquity uh, in a series of images, uh, which creates a kind of flor fleury uh, of cer certain motives. And there is, on the other hand, uh, the eruption, the re-eruption of buried forces, like in, I don't know, uh, uh, Freud's um, um, uh, reading of Jensen's Kadiva uh, uh, or so. And this kind of uh, concept brings me to reflect about, I uh, here shorten my, uh, my uh, observations, uh, to a very short, uh, let's say, consideration of the concept of modernity uh, and of technology uh, in Warburg's, uh, uh, because it has been taken too literally, uh, what he said on Uncle Sam, and I think he is uh, uh, completely uh, obsessed by, by technique. Um, I, I once had a chance here to work in the, uh, the archive, I don't know, 10 years ago, and I've just had one, one uh, quotation I took out, and this is from the 20th of May, uh, 1929, it, is, uh, it says, speit vor ihm eine amerikanische Yacht. Er dominierte Vulkan, dosiertes Feuer mit aufgezwungener Bewegungsrichtung. Uh, that means exactly uh, that, the, that despite the famous quotation about Uncle Sam um, by means of this Augenblicksverknüpfung of electricity and the telegraph rather likes, uh, Warburg rather likes cars, motor yachts, telephones, cable post. Uh, his, lab his library was technologically the most advanced uh, in Europe uh, of his time. He admired uh, technological inventions, the motorboat is comparable uh, to his concept of image, it's a channeling um, of, uh, of energies. No? Image vehicle does not mean a uh, vehicle which carries uh, images, but it means an uh, image which is uh, a vehicle. Uh, well, so the Mediterranean world, uh, a world of archaic energies and cultural achievements which form the basis um, of Europe, seen from the guardian of the lighthouse in Hamburg, a disciple of illumination, aware of the dialectics of illumination. If Warburg is not a Mediterranean, but a Europeanist, um, he envisages a theory of which, uh, which encapsulates and moderates the southern uh, energies, uh, and etc., etc. And I'm not aware of a sense, and if you see, he speaks about the Pope, says immediately the Pope has a car, which car it is, and so on. But Benjamin would never care about this. Um, I'm not aware of a sense um, for the aesthetics of cars and ships uh, in Benjamin's writing. Even if he wrote the Einbahnstraße, the one-way street, uh, and even he wrote a small text about a gas station, um, he was not, he was uh, rather a man of slow motion. Reading in trains, he likes the ferry boats rather than the American yacht, uh, and he has lived the Mediterranean in his own way uh, and died at the liminal site of the Mediterranean, uh, as you know, uh, Paul Bou, where today we have uh, Dan Caravan's memorial. He celebrated the mediality of images, uh, whereas Marburg has leveled uh, them by bringing them all down on the same plane. Um, uh, high art and contemporary image culture. The media theoretical dimension which Warburg in a certain way works out is implicit uh, in Warburg's image practice. Celebrating uh, photography and later also the cinematographic eye, Benjamin does not offer in any way a critique of acceleration. 
He is a coffeehouse intellectual who anatomizes the world of the marble slab of the table and the mirror space um, of the beast. So that is his uh, Denkraum uh, der uh, Besonnenheit. But remember that he did not start his nomad existence, first voluntary and later forced, um, uh, in Paris, but he started it in Capri, where he formulates the principle of origin, not as an arche, a starting point in time, uh, but a vortex in time. Uh, the Trauerspiel is written between the vineyards of Capri and the conversations uh, with Asia uh, Lazis. At the same time, he becomes an observer in um, what uh, Lawless has called mobile visuality, mostly by walking, but not the Schiebelbus uh, rail, <laughs> railway aesthetics, mostly by walking uh, and looking uh, to the sea. It leads him from the vineyards of Capri uh, to the urban social texture uh, of Naples, and he wrote the Denkbild. Uh, if Warburg has a Denkraum, uh, Benjamin has the Denkbild, no? the thought space and the thought. Uh, image, uh, a city which is, uh, the city pictures of, um, of uh, Benjamin are certainly in my eyes the uh, highest literary, uh, let's say, um, uh, works he has written. Uh, a city he, he celebrates for its uh, porosity. Italy itself is uh, an image space in which history uh, and presence uh, intertwine. Uh, as law less says, immediacy as an uh, intense visual spectacle in various temporalities. Uh, history as a m moving constellation of images. And we remember the famous phrase of, uh, of Benjamin uh, from his uh, Thesen zur Geschichte, uh, that history decays into images and not into stories. And this creates within the Mediterranean space an, an interesting dialectics between a hypermodernity and a hyper-historical um, uh, site where uh, there is always the eruption of history or presence of history uh, in, uh, the, uh, in the urban spaces or in the, uh, the countryside. He's not only uh, obsessed by the urban spaces but also by the countryside and after all by the beach uh, and the sea. Uh, and in writing uh, Benjamin tries to be something like uh, photography. What he does with his text is a kind of a photographic uh, literature. Uh, Benjamin elaborates the specific poetics of writing uh, by means of thought images, iconic texts, uh, written for newspapers, uh, small pieces, um, fragmented discourses, highlighting details of a multifaceted liminal space uh, according to the optic unconscious a concept which he has formulated uh, in the small history of photography written in 1931 um, and this became text. So where the optic unconscious is not, and this Sigrid Weigel has uh, well shown, not something like a prosthetic function uh, giving you, allowing you to look in more detail, but uh, unveiling, so to speak, a uh, hidden side of the visual world uh, which then interacts with the uh, psychic unconscious, co collective or, uh, or individual. In Benjamin, they orient, not even a broad view of the Mediterranean space. And, but perhaps he's a localist, if you want. Uh, but perhaps in this localism, there is a Mediterranean. Uh, even if not an awareness or an outspoken awareness of the colonial agenda of that time. Uh, no general argument about antiquity uh, and broad geographical spaces. It is a perspective uh, of the flaneur in, the, in nature uh, or, in, or of in-between spaces. Places like Nice, where his ex-wife had opened a hostel, uh, or Marseille, uh, remember the text consuming in Marseille. I mean, my Benjamin uh, is a Benjamin of these small texts. I have al always read him as a uh, as a poet or as a, as a writer uh, who writes literary texts that I try to come to his concept of image uh, by re reading a text like Fresh Fix uh, and not the Kunstwerk, uh, which has been read too much perhaps. Uh, okay. So the localism he celebrates is a localism between an ecstatic experience uh, and the hyper clarity uh, of Mediterranean space is seen in a kind of uh, concept of light of Großer Mittag, uh, so, so to speak. Remember that uh, Marseille was a site where he really uh, 
celebrates the dirty that's of the, of the city, but on the other hand has a an, has an feeling for the hyperclarity of the light. Exactly what happens at the same time is Le Corbusier and the, uh, the modernity of the Mediterranean, of the Siam, uh, and later the Unité d'Habitation uh, was constructed in uh, Marseille, uh, destroyed in the war, uh, according to the Carta of Athens. And this is not uh, a chance. Okay, I have uh, to come uh, to an end and try to find it in a certain way, because here my discourse uh, drops into a different uh, uh, direction. Um, Benjamin passes from elitist tourism uh, to exile, and the island uh, which stands for this is Ibiza, because in 1932 uh, he goes to Ibiza as a tourist, so to speak, and stays there for a couple of months. In 1933 he turns there as, an, uh, as being in exile. Um, and he developed a kind of nomadic thinking. Um, this is not a theory of uh, transcultural interaction. You will not find it neither in Warburg nor in Benjamin. This is not, we should not uh, predate what some people today and myself sometimes are doing. But he is rather a collector traveler who studies uh, dimensions of, of displacement of things uh, and in a certain way also of images. So Warburg was rather devoted to a generalized transmission model with a very few concrete points of reference, uh, even if not in an interest in the dynamics of the transmission itself, how the ve vehicle really, uh, really worked out. Um, whereas Warburg celebrates history as Anschau, uh, given the porous uh, character of labels, the transformation of history uh, in uh, commodification, exploring the liminal spaces between uh, dreaming and being awake, um, the projection of, um, of um, psychic states into, uh, into the landscape, um, after all obsessed by light, Mediterranean, as I've already said, between history uh, and uh, modernity. Long durée, long durée in Benjamin uh, consists in rural, the rural sphere. It consists in the fact that the, uh, that the um, patients uh, in Ibiza uh, know uh, all the names of the 17 different types uh, of figs you will find uh, on the island. He is obsessed by naming, obviously, because this is part of his, uh, let's say, uh, le shows a combination of, uh, of, of words uh, and things. Uh, and by uh, combining words and things, he transfers them into an um, image uh, space, so to speak. Um, so Benjamin is well aware of the eruption of industrialization and after all tourism uh, in these um, Mediterranean sites, but he celebrates uh, the, let's say, the nearly untouched rural sphere as a long durée. Whereas Barburg's long durée uh, consists in the enchromatic uh, uh, images and the permanent struggle uh, for the uh, thing space. Um, here I have a very schematic um, list of, let's say, bipolar uh, observations about um, about Benjamin and uh, and Warburg, which I will uh, spare yourself and rather show you uh, the house where he lived in Ibiza uh, and uh, the three chairs of a houseman and will bring you one quotation I want to this is the place of his suicide I'm sorry close your eyes a second uh, uh, to the, to a short text which I think uh, very very well brings out. Uh, uh, this concept I, I was speaking about. This is called Short Shadows, written in 1929, the year of uh, our day. Um, towards noon, shadows are no longer, are no more than the sharp black edges at the feet of things, preparing to retreat silently unnoticed into their burrow, into their secret. Then, in its compressed, covering fullness, comes the hour of Zarathustra. The thinker in the noon of life, in the summer garden, for it is knowledge that gives objects their sharpest outline, like the sun at its zenith. It's a fabulous text which gives a whole, uh, let's say, uh, meta theory of our life, if you want, and, its, uh, and even its uh, destruction into this kind of Nietzschean uh, uh, mystics, which then turns into a concept of science or of, uh, of erkenntnis, yeah, uh, of what is, uh, of what is uh, knowledgeable. Well, um, let me come, uh, let me come uh, to, uh, to a short uh, uh, conclusion. Um, what I was thinking about here, and I can just uh, say it um, in a few words, is 
uh, the question what is the relation uh, of Benjamin and Warburg not only to images but to images and objects uh, or Dinge, use the German Heideggerian word which is a text which is really of the same time as you um, as you um, as you know or the Geist Utopie of Ernst Bloch we should bring other people in this bipolar uh, structure obviously and then you will note that in Warburg you will uh, rather not find uh, the word thing at all or even object at all you will uh, you will find it only in a very few uh, remarks in the uh, preparing text for the Kreuzlingen lecture uh, I'm in time two minutes yeah, okay, two, th three, four minutes more. I'm, I've done. Okay, uh, you will find there uh, that he's saying a very strange uh, phrase. He's saying the tragedy of mankind starts by uh, by eating an apple and holding the hoe uh, in his hand. Not so much because he refers to paradise uh, and the fall, but rather before because of the uh, of the how to say um, phobic interaction of. Uh, of, of man and nature or man and uh, the outside world. That means by taking an object into your own body, by an embodiment, uh, that, that is the apple, uh, and by handling an object which is inanimate, uh, but uh, therefore it becomes, how to say, besetzt, yeah, in a Freudian sense, uh, as, an, as an phobic object. Uh, by this kind of uh, let's say a taboo uh, regarding things and object in Warburg is so to speak substituted or permanently negotiated uh, by this intermediary uh, let's say work uh, of culture which is not word but uh, but image no uh, so the image theory of uh, of Warburg is very much uh, in uh, put into this uh, kind of um, verdrängung uh, remotion of uh, of objects uh, in a certain way, whereas whereas uh, Benjamin cannot um, uh, understand his uh, his big activities for the Passagenwerk, which I meant this morning, the Passagenwerk, not writing about Passagen, but the way he he elaborates a literary a new literary method of uh, which is adequate to speak about the submarine, the submarine space uh, of Paris, because from the Mediterranean, let's say literal, the literal. He comes to the Litorano. Uh, he comes then to Paris and discovers Paris as a submarine uh, space. He, he moves always underwater, if you want. Uh, and there you find uh, you find a world uh, which is uh, rather a collection. Uh, so it's an array. It's not, so to speak, uh, single objects. You put yourself into a kind of uh, order as in the Mimosune uh, project, but rather you find already constellations of objects, images, and whatever you want uh, in the antiquarian shops in Moscow, in Paris, in the big cities. So here is already confronted with wild conglomerations of things where he has to, you find it in Balzac already, no? in the 19th century literature, uh, to, which, which he engages and which he brings him to, uh, to, to, to try to develop a new system of order, a new order which then comes as a parallel project, if you want, there he meets with with Warburg, who also is obsessed with a kind of uh, bringing things into a or bringing images into a kind of uh, structural order, uh, which is historically telling and also uh, going into a kind of European uh, identity, if you want. Uh, Benjamin is not in at all, uh, let's say, a Europeanist. He is perhaps even more Mediterraneanist in the sense of uh, this heterogeneous. Uh, open space, uh, which is always negotiating between an underwater and uh, a literal space. Uh, in this sense, I would work out, I've not done it yet, but I would uh, like to work out a little bit more uh, the image object dialectics uh, in, uh, in Benjamin and Warburg and coming from there again to uh, their method. In case of Benjamin, just to conclude, uh, it would be uh, the way of writing. That means uh, uh, on the one hand, studying the text texture of reality, on the other, to develop a strongly iconic dimension uh, of text. This is a fully iconic uh, writing where Warburg is a uh, study is a migration of uh, of images. Uh, Benjamin is an historian uh, of displaced things, uh, becoming then iconic spaces. Uh, this perhaps is what I wanted to say. So. No Paris without Mediterranean, uh, no coming the submarine world uh, of, the, uh, of Paris uh, without exploring uh, the, the coastlines and this, as you know, was also the place of his death. Thank you very much. <laughs>